So, um, welcome everybody. My name is Callum from DX Commander, and I, in the main, use four knots. Two major knots and two technique knots, if you like. So, for instance, in a DX Commander, we supply something called spreader plates, and you have an element, it's a wire element. And in the user guide, it says tire, tire, stopper knot. And there is a the evolution of a stopper knot in the user guide, but I'll show you what it is now. By the way, I prefer using side cutters, oops, <laughs> over scissors. Uh, you end up with a sharper edge, but there we are. A stopper knot is just an overhand knot, regular, you know, that we know and love. And you just go around one more time. And if you tease it all together, and if you want to save... You can tease it all back to the beginning. It looks very nice when it's tied. Uh, architects might specify a stopper knot on a sort of, you know, a nice, nice bit of rope, you know, around a fountain or something. And that is a stopper knot. So it's slightly bigger than an overhand knot and looks nice. And there we are, stopper knot. So I've tied that on shock cord in it. I've tied that on shot cord intentionally because a lot of people in my world tie stopper knots on shot cord. Right, the next one, I've got a bit of 550 paracord here. I want to show you how we tie a bowline. Now, when do I use a bowline? So, particularly in America, I've noticed you Americans absolutely love gadgets and clips and stuff. 50 years ago, our mentors didn't have all those little gadgets and climbing toys and little carabiners and stuff. Well, there was one there. <laughs> I just found one. Little carabiner. You know, they'd just tie regular knots. And you have to remember that when I was, um, I mean, just a few years ago, I remember having um, my mouse. My mouse broke. You know, little wired mouse. You know, it, the, the, the end, uh, you know, broke. I was so <laughs> broke. I was so broke that I actually dismantled the mouse and rewired it. I couldn't afford a new one. And I'm just aware that there's some people out there that don't want to buy, you know, $5 toys and things like that. They just want to know how to tie a knot. So I don't use any in my ham radio career. I use no toys and clips these days. It's all knots. So a bowline, I would tie around a branch, I would tie around a guide point. It's just a way of making a loop and attaching something. But the easiest way of making a bowline is if you imagine taking a car ignition switch with your right hand and twisting it around, that's how we make a loop. You could do it with your left, left hand as well. All right, it's just now a back to front loop. So I'm going to make this little loop. There it is there. And you, hopefully you can see it on the camera. The, this bit, we're going to make into a loop, all right? So I'm just going to give us a bit of room. So very simply, all this we're going to do, and you need to, you need to practice, by the way. Point is just watching this and going, how did he do that in the field? We need to take this long end, all right, the working end. We need to shove it up the hole around the what what will be tension and back down the hole to so the loop here we're going to hold it all together and there's our bowline i mean that's that's easy peasy now if you look at this is great animated knots by the way dot com now he's made it back to front he's done it as a left-handed man right but so but it's exactly the same principle there's the loop got his working end going up round the back and bound down the same loop the advantage to a bowline by the way is that it doesn't matter and honestly you could you could tow a car with this well other than the fact that the <laughs> paracord might break but even when it's super tight you can always undo it the back of the knot there's this little piece here and it always undoes so that's what i do now the next problem we've got is when we not want to make a little loop in the in the line, the rope, the the cord, to do something with, like to create some tension or a pulley. Now, years ago, I used to do this, and you might do this as well, and it does work. All right, just just a loop, so that 
Um, you can then do something and go around a tree and come back and create yourself a little pulley look. That would work as well. The only problem there is that you could, very, very difficult to get this undone once it's done up. So I'm going to show you something called an alp alpine butterfly, which is a lovely knot to tie. It's very rewarding. That's a strange thing to say, but it is. So if we go around three times, okay, so you can see we've got two at the back, three at the front. I've just gone around three times. And then we take this outside one and we put it on the, in the middle. All right, keeping that steady, we then take the new outside one, make a bit of room, and we're gonna tuck that all the way in and back out here, look. So round there, underneath, and back out. And you can see, I think I'm gonna try and tease this together for you. We end up with this lovely little, I don't know why I call it an alpine butterfly, it's some sort of climbing knot. But what I've discovered with an alpine butterfly is it's a hell of a lot easier to undo than a standard knot. That's all. All right. So now we've got the bowline then, and now we've got the alpine butterfly. What can we do with it? So what we'll do is we'll create like two branches. How would I use this, by the way, is it could be at the end of a dipole. I want to go around a tree, right, and create some tension. So I've got a heavy microphone just sitting here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create myself a loop, make myself a little bowline. I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not an expert with knots in that I can't tie them left-handed, right-handed. I've got to do it the way I know, right? So I'm going to slip that over this microphone base, take the rest of my 550 around this microphone stand and back. So what I want to do, let's say my, the end of my dipole is coming to here, right, along here, and I've got it attached somehow. Now, I want to tension it up. So I will create my alpine butterfly. One, two, three. Outside one to the middle. Outside one underneath and over and in. Take my end. That I'm now creating my little fulcrum with. There's a lot of paracord here. Hang on. I'll just move this branch over here so you can see what I'm doing. And now you can see that I've created this little tension thing that I can tie and pull back. In fact, the microphone stand is coming towards me, and so is this microphone here. I'm going to cut this because it's getting a bit too long for the demonstration purposes. Again, I cut paracord with side cutters as well. Put that on the floor. So then what do I do? I just tie a half hitch, but I actually tie a half hitch like, um, like your um, laces. I do it like this so you can always undo it again. Now that will slip. And I had a slippage once on a field day on quite a big tower thing that I was making. So what I do, once I tension that up, I then do it again. I go around and tidy that up. That can't slip now so much. Depends. If you use that blue lorry rope, that will, uh, that can, uh, that can slip out, unfortunately. So that's what I'm doing. So I don't need any carabiners or other hardware. I'm going to pull that. It will come undone now. And I'm done. And my Alpine butterfly will come apart even after a year. I mean, you might need to use your teeth, right? But it will come undone. So the applications for this is my bowline can go. You can tie that literally around something. I'm just getting rid of the Alpine butterfly. So I'm just going to put something in front of me. So let's say I've got my little tree here. I will go round the tree. I will make my bowline up, around, back down. And there's my, there's my bowline. Again, just to remind you, the Alpine butterfly, one, two, three, outside one into the middle, then the outside one up and under, up, 
and under and back. The advantage to all these knots is that after you've tied them a couple of times, you can look at them and go, yeah, that's tied correctly. There's a hundred different ways you can do this. People are going to say in the comments, oh, you could use a trucker's knot, a half hitch, a trucker's hitch. A... Yeah, yeah, you can. The bowline and the alpine butterfly are rewarding to tie. They normally come undone. They're easy to teach. Stop a knot is a walk in the park. And then this half hitch business is just a case of going around and tying a little knot thing. All right, hopefully that has helped you out. You don't need to buy all these bits and pieces that people insist on buying. I don't, all right, at all. So this is me putting up uh, the DX Camaro. I'll cut to the real clip, actually. And you can see that I, all that I do is I pick up the guy line, look. I go through the, the guy point. There's my little alpine butterfly. I go around the alpine butterfly, use it as a bit of a, a tensioner, look. And then... Time a little half hitch. And then what I'd do is I'd take the loose end and go around again. There we go. That will work with 99% of all your ham radio knot problems ever. Half hitch, stop a knot, bowline, alpine butterfly. And then if you just go to animated knots, you can see how they do it. All right, practice. Alpine butterflies, go into the man drawer now, right, in the kitchen. Find some string and practice. Do an alpine butterfly and do yourself a bowline. Because if you stop watching this and go and do something else now, you'll forget, right? You've got to practice. That's all from me. Next video is coming up here. Have fun. Enjoy your knots. All right, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.